Aloha Biochem. In this lecture, we continue on in chapter one and take a look at significant figures. So we're moving ahead in chapter one. And in this lecture, we are covering the measurement portion and we're going to take a look at section 1.5 which deals with significant figures so uh, this is my cat Spike and he's a little restless right now he's meowing and disturbing my video so I'm gonna put him in the video and maybe that'll quiet him down a little bit anyway so what do you think about significant figures Spike all right, you're gonna stop meowing? Okay, we'll see. So if you hear any meows, you know who it is. So the way we're gonna study significant figures is by taking a look, examining how to record a measurement properly. There's a very close connection between recording measurements properly and significant figures. So what we're going to do it's a little bit different than how the textbook introduces significant figures is we're going to imagine we are recording the volume of water in several different types of glassware. And in doing that, I think you'll gain a better understanding of what significant figures actually are. So the first piece of glassware that we're going to record the volume of is a simple beaker. A beaker is like a chemistry cup. And when you use a beaker, you just want to get a quick, you know, approximate volume of liquid. So this right here is a 100 milliliter beaker. It holds up to 100 milliliters. And it only has one line on the side of the glass. Sometimes other pieces of glassware have uh, multiple graduation marks. You know, you graduate up to more, uh, a higher and higher volume of liquid, but you know, beakers usually have just a few graduation marks or maybe just one. And this one only has one mark. And if you fill the liquid up to the line, that means you have about a hundred milliliters. So in this case though, the liquid, the water is only filled up to there. So, it's our job to write down the measured amount of water in this beaker by approximating, you know, like how, uh, what, you know, a fraction of 100 milliliters uh, we have. So the way you want to do it is to uh, mentally, you know, the, the, uh, the appropriate way to do it is to mentally divide, uh, you know, this, empty space where there are no graduation marks into 10 milliliter intervals and say, okay, I think this is either 70 milliliters or 60 milliliters or 80 milliliters. You're only going to uh, guess, you know, what 10 milliliter mark it, the water line uh, is closest to. You're not going to say, uh, it looks to me like 68.4 milliliters or 73 milliliters. It's either going to be 60, 70, or 80 milliliters, okay? The tick mark or the graduation mark tells you 100 milliliters. So we're going to guess the tens position. And it looks to me about 70 milliliters. Now, if it were you taking the measurement, you might say it looks more like 60 which would be totally fine. It looks to me like 70, maybe it looks to you like 60, someone else might say it's 80. But no one's, no one's going to come along and say it looks about 20 milliliters. We're all going to be pretty close in our estimated value. So I'm going to call it at 70, but to acknowledge that others might measure a little bit differently than me, I'm going to include this uncertainty in my measurement. So I'm going to say 70 milliliters plus or minus 
10 millimeters because you might say 60, someone else might say 80. So plus or minus 10 millimeters. This measurement, this is the measurement right here, the measured value, and this is the uncertainty. Usually you don't write the uncertainty, but I'm just including it uh, for now. So this is an example of a one significant figure measurement. We only know, you know, the tens position. We have no idea what the ones position actually is. I don't know if it's 71 or 72 or 73. I, I don't have any information on the ones position, but I am estimating the tens position. So this is the only digit that I, you know, think I know about. So there's only one digit that I do have information on. And so this is a one significant figure measurement. So let's go over to a graduated cylinder. A graduated cylinder has more graduation marks, hence the name. And it's also a little bit more expensive. You know, beaker costs $5. Graduated cylinder might cost 10 bucks, a cheap one. So this is a 100 milliliter grad cylinder and suppose the water level is up to there. Now, look at the graduation marks this time. There are marks telling you 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, etc. on up to 100. So the graduation marks tell you the tens position. Everybody agrees that the amount of water is between 10 and 20. Okay, but where we will differ a little bit is, is it 12 milliliters? Is it 13 milliliters? What fraction of the way between 10 and 20 is it? So again, we do the same thing. We mentally divide, uh, you know, and imagine there are tick marks for the ones position. So imagine which tick mark it lies closest to. So I see the tick marks for the tens position. This is the 10 and this is the 20, but I'm imagining 11, 12, 13, and it looks to me like the water level is at the 13 and then 14, 15, 16, etc. So I'm going to make the call that uh, it's 13 milliliters. You might say 12, someone else might say 14, but no one's gonna say 19. We're all gonna be pretty close together again. So the measurement, my measurement is 13 milliliters and to acknowledge uh, the uncertainty and whoever you know is taking the measurement, I'm you know going to acknowledge that by the uh, plus or minus one milliliter. So here, the one everybody agrees on, but the three is the estimated digit. Okay. So this time we have information on two digits, the tens and the ones position. So this is an example of a two significant figure measurement, okay? We have no idea if it's 13.1, 13.2, 13.3. We have no idea on the 10th of a milliliter position, on a 10th position, but we do estimate the ones position to be a three. Okay, so this is a little bit uh, better uh, we have two significant figures. Now, the more significant figures you have in your measurement, the better. So let's now take a look at a 10 milliliter grad cylinder. Uh, this might be a little bit more expensive than that cheap 100 milliliter grad cylinder. So the 10 milliliter grad cylinder now has graduation marks telling you the one milliliter uh, values. So one, two, three milliliters, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The capacity is 10. Okay, now, so this is one, two, three, four, five. Everybody agrees it's between four and five. So four point what? And it looks to me like it's about 4.9.
okay, 4.9, you might say 4.8, all right? But I'm going, I'm the one making the measurement, so I'm gonna call it at 4.9. So I'm gonna say 4.9 and acknowledge that others might measure a little bit differently with that uncertainty again. But this time the uncertainty is in the 10th position because someone else might say 4.8. So my measured value is 4.9 plus or minus a 0.1 millimeters. Now here we have information on the ones position. Everybody agrees it's four point something um, and I'm estimating this to be you know 0.9. So again this is a two sig fig measurement because we know what's in the ones position and we're estimating what's in the tenth position. So a two sig fig measurement again Okay, we don't know what's in the hundredth position. We don't know if it's 4.92 or 4.97 or whatever. Okay, we're just gonna make, gonna make the call at 4.9. So you see the pattern here. If the graduation marks tell you the ones position, then you estimate what's in the 10th position. If the graduation marks tell you the tens position, 10, 20, 30, then you estimate the ones position, you don't go any further than that. And here, if the graduation marks tell you the hundreds position, then you estimate the tens position, but no further. So maybe two more examples. Um, let's take a look at a, a burette. A burette uh, maybe costs 30 bucks. And the burette is used to uh, deliver liquids into some container below. So you fill a burette up, uh, you hold it vertical, and then there's a little shutoff valve, and when you open it up, the liquid pours out below. So here's our burette. It has a capacity of 20 milliliters, and uh, it uh, has tick marks. Let's see what the tick marks are. So this is 20 milliliters. That would be 10 milliliters. And then, and then this would be uh, five milliliters. So you have, um, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. So it looks like the tick marks are telling us uh, the ones position. So we're going to estimate what's in the 10th position. And everybody agrees that the water level is between this tick mark and that tick mark. So this is the 12 milliliter tick mark and that's the 13 milliliter tick mark. So it's going to be 12 point something. So what would you measure it at? I would measure it at, it looks to me like it's about halfway between this line and that line. So I'm gonna say it's 12.5. Okay, and the uncertainty this time would be plus or minus 0.1. So plus or minus whatever the last digit position is. Plus or minus 0.1 would be the uncertainty. Now, every once in a while, actually pretty often, um, on the glassware, the manufacturer of the glassware will tell you the uncertainty. Um, and so sometimes when you look on the side of a piece of glass where it says the uncertainty is plus or minus 0.1 milliliter or plus or minus 0.3 milliliters. So if the uncertainty is not printed on the side of the glassware, then we know how to attribute the uncertainty. It's going to be plus or minus whatever the last digit position is we have anything to say about it. So plus or minus one in this digit position. So that's plus or minus 0.1 milliliters. But sometimes the glassware will override the default uncertainty and say, no, you're supposed to uh, use my uncertainty. You know, I built this glassware. I know what the uncertainty is, you know, and uh, plus or minus 0.3. So be on the lookout. Uh, it, next time you look at a, a syringe or a burette or a beaker or something, see if there is an uncertainty that the manufacturer tells you you're supposed to use. Okay, if there is none, 
then you use the default value, which is plus or minus one in the last digit position. Okay, so let's go back to our measured value. Um, it was uh, between 12 and 13, and I'm gonna call it at 12.5. Okay, 12.5. Now this, we have information on the tens position, the ones position, and we estimated uh, the tenth position. So we have information on three digit positions. This is a three sig fig number. So you see uh, what sig figs are? Significant figures are the number of digit positions that you know about. I know uh, what's in the tens position, I know what's in the ones position, and I you know, really know what's in the tenth position. Okay, the last one is always the estimated position, but it's still included. So this time, one, two, three significant figures. That's pretty good. The more significant figures you can get from a measurement, the, usually the more expensive the glassware is. And also the smaller volumes you measure, the more expensive the glassware is. So uh, there you go, 12.5. Now one more example. Let's go to a syringe. In the medical field, you use syringes all the time. And this syringe right here, it's kind of blown up so you can see it. It has a capacity of just one milliliter. Okay, that's a, a tiny bit. A milliliter, by the way, is the same thing as a cubic centimeter. Okay, a cubic centimeter equals one milliliter. So this is a tiny uh, capacity and, and we're looking very closely at it. Um, so imagine the water level is filled up to there and it's our job to write down the proper measured amount of water. So let's see what the graduation marks are now. So if this is one milliliter, then this would be 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and 0 0.10. I'm sorry, uh, 1. So 0 0.9 and then 1. So yeah, the, the lines going all the way across are the 0 0.1, 0 0.2. Now the smaller lines, this is 0 0.02, 0 0.04, 0 0.06, 0 0.08, and then 0 0.1. 1 1.2, 1.4, 1.6, 1.8, 1.8, uh, I'm sorry, uh, 0 0.12, 0 0.14, 0 0.16, 0 0.18, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 
So you're not going to say that this is 0.3 milliliters because if you do that, you'd be cheating yourself out of significant figures. So the proper recorded measurement here is 0 0.300. I'm making the call that the water is right on the line. It's not 0.299, it's not 0 0.301. I'm saying it's 0 0.300 because I can estimate what's in the thousandth position. So I'm going to include the zero in that position. Okay, so I know that's kind of strange. You might look at this and say, well, that's 0.3 or 0.30. Why do we have to include that last zero? Or, or why, why don't we just say it's 0.3000000? You know, why don't you include more zeros? No, the way you do it is whatever the tick marks are telling you, they tell us the tenth position. So we write down what's in the tenth position. They tell us what's in the hundredth position. And so we estimate one more position. We have to write down what's in that thousandth position. So I'm making the call, it's 0 0.300. And it just so happens that this syringe has a manufacturer's uncertainty printed on it of 0 0.003 milliliters. So that overrides what uncertainty I would attribute it, uh, which would be plus or minus 0 0.001. The man, I'm just going to, you know, use the manufacturer's uncertainty. Okay. So syringe is the most expensive one out there. Um, now there are syringes that measure even smaller amounts of water. You, you can get, you know, down to the fourth, you know, the 10,000th of a milliliter and, and maybe even a little bit smaller, um, so syringes can measure tiny, tiny amounts of liquid. So in this measurement right here, the way you count the significant figures is by looking at how many digit positions you know about. So uh, this, you know, this zero up front is, is not included. The first, when you read a measurement, you, know, you read it from left to right and you come to the first number, you know, non-zero number that you know about, okay? So you, you always ignore any zeros that are written to the left. So when I'm reading this number, 0 0.300 milliliters, I, I ignore anything until I get to a non-zero number because this is, doesn't really mean anything. Okay, this is the one that I measured right here. So that's the first digit that I had anything to say about and I called that a zero too and I also estimated that at zero. So this is a three significant figure measurement. I hope that's not confusing uh, that you don't include this digit position. So it would not be one, two, three, four significant figures. You ignore that one and you just say that it's one, two, three. Okay, we knew what was in the tenth position because the lines told us that we knew what's in the hundredth position and what's in the thousandth position. We estimated that one. And so this is a three sig fig measurement. Now, here's an exercise. Um, suppose there are several volume measurements and it's your job to determine how many significant figures are in each one. So, uh, the first thing you might notice is that some of these go to the tenth position, some of them go to the hundredth position, and some of them go to the thousandth position. So it looks like these volume measurements were taken using different pieces of glassware because, uh, you know, only certain types of glassware can go way out to the thousandth position. Okay. Now, the first one. 80 milliliters was probably taken using an instrument like this, a beaker with only one line and someone called it at 80. Someone else might have called it at 90. Someone else might have called it at 70, but this person said it's 80, All right? So this right here is a one significant figure measurement. They didn't know if it was 81 or 82. You, you cannot say that when you're dealing with a beaker like this. Okay, so 
They just said it's 80 and they have no idea what's in the ones position. So they only have information on the tens position. So this is a one significant figure measurement. Now look at the next one carefully, 80 point millimeters. Whenever you see the decimal written, that means that you do, that you are saying that you know what's in the ones position, okay? This measurement right here would be taken probably using a graduated cylinder that looks kind of like that. And imagine if the water level were right on the line up there. Let, let's just zoom in. Imagine if the water level were right there, okay? It would look to me like 80. I wouldn't say it's 79 or 81, you know, because it looks to me like it would be right on the line. So I'm going to say 80 and say, I know that I'm, I'm saying that that's a, a, a zero that I know, you know, somebody else might have said 81 if it looked right a little bit above the line, but it looked to me like it was right on the line. So I'm saying it's 80 and I want to say that I know what's in that one's position. So the, the reason this second one is different than the first measurement is because it's got that dot. When you see that dot, that means uh, you, you, you're saying you know that that's a zero, okay? In the first one, you, you don't know what's in the ones position, you know, because it was taken using an instrument like this. But in the second example, it was taken using an instrument like that. And, uh, you know, so you do uh, call what's in the ones position. And I'm calling that, that, whoever made this one is calling it as a zero. So here, both the tens position and the ones position are understood. And so this is a two significant figure measurement. You see, you never count zeros to the left of your measured value. But sometimes you'll count the zeros to the right. You always count the zeros to the right when you see that decimal point. So you see that decimal point right there? That means we do count the zeros to the right. So you see that decimal point right there? We do count the zeros to the right, okay? But if you don't see the decimal point, then you don't count it. Okay, this is a one sig fig measurement. That's a two sig fig measurement. Now look at the next one, 37 milliliters. Now this next one, um, you know, you, you're being told what's in the tens position, you're being told what's in the ones position, but no more. So you read a measurement from left to right. So you're told this one and that one, this is a two sig fig measurement. Now reading from left to right, this example, 17.5. You know, this position, that position, and that position. This is a three sig fig number. Now look at the next one, 11.0. Do we count the 10th position? Well, yes we do, because we see the decimal point. So you read it from left to right. Uh, you start at the first number, so it's the, you know, what's in the tens position. So this one, this one, and this one, this is a three sig fig number. Again, reading from left to right, 10.00. We're told this one, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, when you see the decimal point, that means you always count zeros on the right. Those are called the trailing zeros. So this would be a four sig fig measurement. Now what about 10.0? Okay, this would be a three sig fig measurement. It's, it's very odd that these two measured values are different, 10.00 and 10.0, okay? They are. The 10.00 milliliters would, uh, is taken from a better measuring instrument than the 10.0. This one up here was able to pick up, the, the person who took the measurement was able to estimate what's in the hundredth of a milliliter, whereas the person who took this measurement was only estimating what's in the tenth of a milliliter. Okay, so this is only three sig figs. That one's four. Four sig figs is really good when you're doing measurements in science. Okay, how about this one? 1.00 milliliters. 
Well, these are the trailing zeros on the right of the number, and, and we do include them because we see the decimal point. So one, two, three significant figures. And how about this one, 0 0.010. You never count the leading zeros on the left. So when you read a measurement, you read it from left to right, and, and you, when you get to the first non-zero number, that's where your measurement starts. Okay, that's where it starts. So that's the first significant figure digit position we count, the hundredth position, and that's the last one. We do count this zero because I see the decimal point. <clears throat> so reading from left to right, that's the first significant figure and that's the last one. This is a two significant figure measurement. And then the last example, 0 0.0007, you don't count those leading zeros. And this is uh, the only digit position that you see, okay, in the measurement. Okay, so this is a one sig fig uh, number. So I hope that that <clears throat> makes sense. And if you see any measured value anywhere, you should be able to quickly determine how many significant figures are in there. Okay, there's some pretty tricky examples in, in this uh, group right here. And, and so hopefully, uh, you know, if you understood this, you, then you can uh, do it for any measure and count the number of significant figures. Now, what we've been talking about so far is measured values. There's a difference between exact numbers and measured numbers, exact numbers and measured numbers. If, if you count the number of, let's say, um, the number of pens. So I'm holding some pens in my right hand. How many pens do you see? One, two, three, four. There are exactly four pens. We're not going to say uh, it looks closer to 3.9 or no, it looks like 4.1. No, it's exactly four. 4.0000000, exactly four. That's what an exact number is when you're counting something. There's no in between. Okay? It's either you know, one, two, three, four, five. So exact numbers are whole numbers and it's, it's one or the other. Exact numbers have an unlimited number of significant figures. There's no uncertainty there in an exact number. So these are always when you count something, like there's one, there's two, there's three. Sometimes you see exact numbers in uh, relationships. Okay, for example, um, there are exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. There's not 100.0 or 100.00. No, there's exactly 100 centimeters in a meter. So you can count them up. One meter is made of exactly 100 centimeters, not 99, not 98, not 101, uh, you know, not a 100.001, no, exactly 100, okay? So 100.000000, as many zeros as you want, unlimited number of significant figures. So when you see uh, numbers, with a unit, it's good to, you know, note if it's a measured value or an exact value. So 25 people, is that an exact number of people or is that a measured number of people? You know, could it be 24.9? Could it be 25.1? Is it possible to have 25.1 people? No, there's either 24, 25, or 26 people. So 25 people, that's an exact number. You can count them up. Another example would be 117 red blood cells. Okay? There's, 
you know, if you're talking about a, a red blood cell, that you either have one or you don't. Okay, so it's 116, 117, 118. So 117, that's exactly 117 red blood cells. You can count them up. Ten fingers, you can count them all up. Okay, um, we already saw this example. Uh, now, this 100 centimeters equals one meter. We could rewrite the relation between centimeters and meters as follows. One centimeter is 0 0.01 meters. So when you see a relation like this, exactly one centimeter is exactly 0 0.01 meters. So that's a, you know, kind of a little trickier case. A one centimeter is a hundredth of a meter. Okay, so again, these two on the left and the right are both exact numbers, just like the one above. So this is a little trickier example though. Now, the next one, 1,000 meters equals one kilometer, one kilometer. Well, yes, there are exactly 1,000 meters in a kilometer. So, you know, defined relations uh, will often have exact numbers in them. So if you see something like this, a thousand meters equals one kilometer, that's a, an exact number. There are exactly a thousand meters in a kilometer. On the other hand, if you're told a person runs a thousand meters, well, that's a different usage of a thousand meters. That would be someone estimated or measured the distance that that person ran. So this is a different usage of a thousand meters and, and this would be a one significant figure measurement. Okay, uh, you know, they, they didn't have anything to say about the hundreds, the tens or the ones position. They estimated it's about a thousand meters. Okay, kind of like if you just saw somebody uh, running and they would go way off in the distance and uh, somebody says, hey, how far does that pe person run to run? And you look and you say, ah, oh, about a thousand meters. Okay, you're not going to look way out in the distance and say, oh, I think he ran 1,123 meters. Okay, I, I, I have a pretty good eye for things. No, he ran about 1,000 meters. Okay, you're, you're estimating it. So one sig fig measurement. So here, this is a one sig fig measured distance, but the one above, this is an exact number. Okay, in infinite number of of significant figures and exact numbers. So kind of weird. Okay, some other exact numbers that um, if you're t counting up molecules, 23 molecules, you know, two cats. We got two cats here, uh, Spike and Hershey. So maybe I'll show you Hershey next time. Um, uh, six atoms, you can count up the atoms. Uh, now, it's very interesting that one inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. Okay, it's not approximately 2.54 centimeters. It's not uh, like 2.541 or 2.542. No, it's exactly 2.54 centimeters. So here, this is an exact conversion. Exactly an inch is exactly 2.54 centimeters. Okay. If you multiply this relation by 100 on both sides, you get 100 inches is 254 centimeters. So that's the relation between inches and centimeters. Okay. Now, uh, the last example is uh, 1,000 milligrams is exactly a gram. Okay, you can count up all of the milligrams in a gram. There are exactly 1,000 of them. But if a chemist weighs 1,000 point milligrams of powder, then he's measuring the amount of powder. So this usage of a thousand milligrams is different than that usage. This one would be an exact number with infinite number of sig figs, whereas that one is a measured value. The chemist apparently measured the number of milligrams of powder. And since you can see the decimal point, this time 
there are one, two, three, four significant figures. So you count those trailing zeros this time because you see that decimal point. So the chemist is sure, you know, uh, what's in these positions right here. Okay, so he knows that it's a thousand. He knows it's not a uh, 1100 or anything like that. He knows, no, it's 1000 milligrams. Okay, he's saying all the way down to the one milligram position. So four sig fig measurement right here. Okay, um, now that's significant figures. Uh, definitely read the textbook though and get the author's perspective on what significant figures are and how to determine how many there are in a measurement. Now, once you understand what significant figures are, um, you often have to you have to know how to handle significant figures when you do calculations. So very rarely in science do you just have a measurement and you never use it for any calculation at all. No, we use measurements and calculations all the time. And a, a very common calculation is to add up various amounts of volumes. So imagine that we have three different instruments containing water and, and we uh, wanna know, uh, well, how much water is in each of them? And then what's the total amount of water? So first of all, looking at these three devices, uh, let's measure the amount of water in each of them and then calculate the total volume of water. So that's our task here. And the first one is a beaker with only one graduation mark and it looks like 60 milliliters to me. You might say 50, somebody else might say 70, I'm gonna say 60, okay? This is a, you know, I don't know what's in the ones position. Okay, so this is a one sig fig measurement right there. And then looking at the next one, looks like a grad cylinder. It's a 50 milliliter capacity. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. So we got graduation marks telling us what's in the tens position. So we estimate what's in the ones position. And it looks to me like 13 milliliters. Okay, you might say 14, I say 13. So 13 milliliters. Um, so now uh, the second one, we know what's in the ones position but we don't know any further. And then the last is a 10 milliliter grad cylinder and it's somewhere between seven and eight. And I'm gonna say, uh, you know, 7.8. You might say 7.7, .7. Uh, I'm gonna say 7.8. So we're both pretty close. So 7.8 milliliters. Okay, so this time we know it's in the 10th position. So now that we have measurements for all three of these, let's add them up. Now, when you add up numbers, it's, it's good to align where the decimal point would go. So we don't write it in the first two, but you know, it's, it's understood to be right there. And so you line them all up. So, so this is the 10th position. This is the ones position. That's the tens position. And then when you add these up, this is simple. You know, uh, this would be uh, eight, um, this would be, well, three plus seven is 10. So you carry the one and then one plus six plus one is eight. And so 80.8 uh, milliliters, but we have to round this to 80. So the actual total amount of water isn't 80.8. You have to round it to 80. And that's because Looking at the first measurement, if we don't know what's in the 10th position, how can we have anything to say about what's in the 10th position in the total? Well, we can't, so we don't, we round it out. And if we don't know what's in the ones position in the first measurement, how can we have anything to say about what's in the ones position in the total? Well, we don't. So we round it out. So we basically chop off, you know, we only include uh, the position that we know about. So we know uh, that this is a six in the tens position. You know, we know that that's a one. We know this is a zero. There's nothing there, so, but we know that that's zero. So we basically limit the number of digit positions 
uh, and we round out the rest of them. So, so we have to you know, round it to the tens position. And you remember the rules for rounding. If you know you need to round it to this position, you look to the next one. If it's five or more, you round up. If it's four or less, you round down. And so this is four or less. We're gonna round down to 80, okay? So 60 plus 13 plus 7.8 milliliters is 80 milliliters. Go take that to your math professor, okay? Ask your math professor to calculate the total uh, volume. And, uh, and then when they say 80.8, you say no, it's 80. And then see what they say. So the rule, when you add measurements or subtract them, you could be adding and subtracting, you know, add this, add that, and then subtract that. It will be the same kind of rule. When you do addition and subtraction, the rule is to keep the least number of decimal places. Okay, so one more example. Um, suppose you want to find the total mass. So you have uh, four different masses. Add them all up. What's the total mass? So the first one is one milligram. The second one is 0.1 milligram. And the third one is 0 0.02. And the fourth one is 0 0.003. It's very easy to add numbers. So, you know, the total mass before you round it would be 1.123 milligrams. But again, uh, look, the first measured mass, you don't know what's in the 10th position, the 100th position, or the 1,000th position. So we can't say what's in the, any of those positions in the total. We have to round it out. The first one limits, the, you know, li limits us to the ones position. So you, know, you basically round all this out. So 1.123 milligrams rounds to one milligram. I know that's strange, and maybe you uh, don't like that, but it's what you're supposed to do. Uh, imagine this. Imagine if you have a big truck filled with gravel and it drives onto a scale. Uh, it's not a very sensitive scale, and so the scale would register, um, you know, uh, 1,200 pounds of gravel or 1,300 pounds of gravel. Okay, but it's not gonna register, it's not any more sensitive. And imagine you drop a feather into the back of the truck. Okay, well technically there's a little bit more weight in the back, but it's insignificant. In the same way, one milligram is kind of like, you know, most of the weight here. It's like you're adding kind of nothing here, you know, and kind of nothing there and nothing there. And, and so, you know, one milligram plus Nothing, 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 you know, equals one milligram. Okay, that's sort of the way you're supposed to think about it. Um, so I, I know this is uh, a little bit different than a truck and a piece of, you know, gravel and feather, and but, but that's, hopefully that makes sense. Now, when you use measured values in calculations, uh, there's a different rule for when you multiply and divide with them. So when you add and subtract, you keep the least number of decimal places. So basically I'd like to draw a dotted line. Um, and then on the right of the dotted line, that's where I don't know. So I round that out and on the left is where I know. And so that's where I'd round to. And, and so here the dotted line would go right there along the decimal points. And I would know the ones position. I don't know what's to the right of it because I don't know what's to the right of it up here. So I'd round that out. Um, the multiplication division rule is a little bit different. You, this time you keep the least number of significant figures. Addition subtraction rule, keep the least number of decimal places. Multiplication division rule, keep the least number of significant figures. Very similar, but let's see how this one works. Okay. Now to illustrate the multiplication division rule, Let's imagine we have a rectangle. Okay, maybe it's a piece of yellow paper and it's your job to calculate the area. Oh, it looks like this is gold foil. Okay, so gold foil, a piece of gold foil, uh, you know, like aluminum foil, but this is, you get this at aluminum foil, you get at Walmart, gold foil, you can buy it at Target. Okay, so maybe this is, uh, you know, some fancy, 
metal foil that only the upper scale restaurant uh, uh, stores sell. So gold foil, and we want to calculate the area of this gold foil. And you have used a ruler to measure the width and the length. And you have measured the width as six centimeters and the length as 72 centimeters. Okay, so to calculate the area, it's gonna be length times width, 72 centimeters times six centimeters. Now, 72 centimeters is a two sig fig measurement and six centimeters is a one sig fig measurement. Okay, now when you do the calculation, 72 times six, uh, you get 432. And then centimeters times centimeters, you get centimeters squared. So, you know, when you measure uh, area, you know, the units of area are centimeters squared in this case. So the question is, 432 centimeters squared, where do we round this? Well, the rule for multiplication and division is to keep the least number of significant figures. Okay, when you measure, when you have a two sig fig, length times a one sig fig width, you're gonna have a one sig fig area. Okay, two and one, one is the lesser number of sig figs, so that's how many the answer is gonna have. Okay, it's as simple as that. This is maybe a little simpler rule than the previous one. So the answer has to have only one significant figure. So when you're looking at your, your measured or, or your calculated area, 432 centimeters squared, when you get to the first number, that four, that's the one that you round it to because you're only having one sig fig in the answer. So you round out the rest of them, okay? So this is gonna round down to 400 centimeters squared. Six centimeters times 72 centimeters is about 400 centimeters squared. So it's kind of strange at first to to see this rule, let's, um, let's see why this rule is important. Okay, now imagine instead of you taking these measurements, someone else had taken them. And to someone else, instead of six centimeters, that person said, it looks like five. And it's not 72 centimeters, it looks like 71. So their measurements are slightly less than yours. Some people do measure a little bit less, you know, that's just the way they look at the ruler. There's nothing wrong with it. So let's take that other person's measurements and calculate the area again. Instead of 72 times six, it's gonna be 71 times five. 71 times five. Okay, when you do this calculation, you get 355 centimeters squared, okay. And then this is a two sig fig versus one sig fig. So the, uh, you know, it would be rounded again to one sig fig in the calculated area. So, and this time it would round up, you know, since this is five or greater, you round it up. So this one would actually round to 400 centimeters squared. But um, suppose a third person had taken the measurements and instead of six, it looks to them like seven. Maybe they measure a little bit higher. And instead of 72, it looks like 73. So what would they calculate the area to be? So um, they would say 73 times seven. And doing this calculation, look at their area. 73 times seven would be 511, okay? And then when they round properly, this is a two sig fig length versus a one sig fig width, two versus one. And so their answer is gonna have one, and so you round it right there to keep only one. So this would round down to 500. You see, uh, just by being slightly off in the measured length and width, your calculated area would be vastly different. So someone else with slightly different numbers would have a much different calculated area than you did. Uh, so it doesn't make sense to say, well, this is 432 centimeters squared uh, when just slightly different lengths and widths would give you 511. So you see the calculated areas are differing in the hundreds position. 
So it makes sense that you don't say what's in the tenth position or the hundred. I'm, I'm sorry, the tens or the ones position. So it makes sense that the calculated area is rounded to the hundreds position because someone else with slightly different measured values would, would calculate 500. Okay. Anyway, I hope that makes sense. So one more example of, uh, um, you know, doing uh, multiplication. Calculate the volume of air in a box with measurements 12 inches times 8 inches times 6 inches. So that's your length, width, and height. So when you have a box and you know the length, the width, and the height, to calculate the volume, it's length times width times height. So that would be 12 times 8 times 6. Now 12 times 8 times 6, the first, you know, length is a 2 sig fig measurement, but then 8 inches is a 1 sig fig measurement, and then 6 inches is a 1 sig fig measurement. And so 2 versus 1 versus 1, so our answer is going to only have one because, again, uh, you keep the least number of sig figs in everything that you're multiplying and dividing. Okay, so the answer, you know, two and then one and then one, so our answer has one. Okay, so uh, just do the calculation first. It, it's going to be cubic inches for the unit, and then 12 times 8 times 6 is 576, but we only keep one sig fig in our answer, so we're going to round it to the first digit position, okay, in our calculated volume here. And so this is gonna round up this time to uh, 600 cubic inches. Now, the, um, the last example is a little more complicated because you have to do the addition and subtraction rule and the multiplication and division rule. Suppose you have a calculation that looks like this. 42.5 centimeters times the difference of 19.56 centimeters minus 15.0 centimeters. So imagine you come across that and you're asked to calculate it and then round it properly. Well, you know how to do the calculation. Of course, anytime you see parentheses, you do what's inside the parentheses first. And it looks like inside the parentheses, this is a subtraction. So when I do this first calculation, I got to use the addition subtraction rule. So let's, uh, let's do the first calculation. So 19.56 minus 15.0. Let's, let's do that on the side over here. 19.56 minus 15.0. And uh, I get 4.56 would be inside the parentheses. 4.56. Now here, uh, this is addition subtraction, so the rule is to keep the least number of digit positions. You see, the first one we know out to the hundredth of a centimeter, and the second one we only know out to the tenth of a centimeter. And so in the result, we're supposed to round it to the tenth of a centimeter. So that would mean, in the result, this is a one, two significant figure result. Four point, uh, you know, this would round to 4.6 centimeters. Okay. So since we're using this again, we don't round it yet. So anytime you do a calculation and you have to use the calculated value again, wait to round it. So let's just understand that this is a two sig fig measurement, but we're not gonna round it yet. We're gonna wait till the very end and then round it. So 4.56, although this is a two sig fig measurement, let, let's plug it back in in place of all of that. So 19.56 minus 15.0 is 4.56, but understanding that this is a two sig fig measurement. So now we have 42.5 centimeters times 4.56 centimeters. You have a three sig fig number measurement times a two sig fig measurement, so your result's gonna have two, because now we're doing the multiplication division rule. So 42.5 times 4.56. We, we keep that unrounded value and we, we, 
we do the calculation and all of that comes out to 193.8 and then we don't have to do anything else so now we round it three sig figs versus two so we limit our answer to two so we have to round it here to the tens position so that's going to chop it off to 190 centimeters squared so you always round at the end now that was a lot in this video significant figures are very closely related to how to record measurements properly um, i hope it makes sense and uh, if it doesn't you know you can always go back and watch it again uh, definitely read the textbook get your author's perspective and definitely uh, do the homework problems you know this kind of stuff when you practice it uh, it makes a lot more sense after doing lots of problems in our next video we will cover scientific notation so uh, stay tuned for that and i will see you next time aloha